Taylor, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage here on location at AWS reInvent, Amazon Web Services annual user conference. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, your host, with Dave Vellante, my co-host. Our 13 years covering AWS, our 11th year covering Amazon. We've been here every year, 11 years at reInvent. Um, Dave has been quite the journey. In fact, I'll never forget 2013 was our yeah, first year. We were just talking about and it. And Jerry Chen was walking through and he said, Back then, we didn't have a schedule. It was like, hey, you free? Come on up. Oh, this is James Hamilton. Come on up. Is he? He runs the other way. Andy Jassy, I don't want to have on the cube. Um, but we got everybody else. Jerry Chen just left VMware as a newly minted partner at Greylock. Back again. He's been on every single year on the cube. Thanks for having me, man. Great it's to see you. To see Legend. You, uh, now you're rich. You're a big BC. <laughs> you're a fat cat. Um, what's going on? How do you see it? Uh, I don't think I'm that fat yet. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to be the cool cat. Um, but it's, it's amazing, right? Uh, 2013, 10 years running, 11, 12 years you guys have been doing this. It changed from like basically one ballroom, we were all in tw 11, 12 years ago, right. to this thing up and down the strip. A lot so, of hoodies that year. And you were just saying that it's both, it's tough to do, and I have a lot of respect for what they've done. It's both doing incremental improvements as well like big releases, right? And so, how do you like give a little catnip for all the audiences? Yeah, yeah, so, I mean 80 billion, you know, add, It's a real business. Add 10%. <laughs> that's, what was that's your line, is the winner take all or winner take most? Was winner that, take that most, year, yeah, yeah. If I remember correctly? I, I said, I don't know if it's winner take all, I think it's winner take <laughs> most. And uh, it's interesting because over the past 10 years, Google and Azure clearly have made their inroads to different various levels of success. AI, as we talked about, has turned the tables completely. And I think you're seeing two or three different cloud paradigms. You have kind of a, an edge cloud, guys like Cloudflare. Yeah. You have classic clouds like Amazon did in early days and these AI clouds, right? And so AI clouds now are all about GPUs, InfiniBand, low power, whereas like edge clouds are close to the user and the classic clouds are Amazon. Now clearly, Amazon, Azure, and Google also want to own the AI clouds, and so I think it's a race now which company can add the AI cloud portfolio and, and win in that market. Yeah. And this is potentially the opening for Google, although it hasn't shown up in the numbers yeah. yet. I mean, well, really the, haven't seen it. Well, the arms dealer and all this is NVIDIA, and it's interesting to see oh, Jensen yeah. on stage, because DGX Cloud was not, Amazon was not included, I think they passed on that, okay, from what I've been reporting, it's not been officially reported, but it's kind of what I'm hearing. Um, and then they've enabled CoreWeave yeah. and other companies to create these sub-clouds or other castles, if you will, in the <laughs> clouds. And that's just opened up the HPC market who know how to put stuff together with bare metal yeah. and data centers. Yeah. So you're starting to see purpose-built, large-scale GPU clusters. And I press Adam on that. You know, I think you, to your point around data centers, you might see not as a pendulum swing back, but more inertia to private clouds and private data centers for security reasons and privacy reasons, right? So there's this inevitable shift towards public cloud, but now large enterprises want to train their data, they want private data, and so increasingly we're seeing more of our, our customers in our portfolio want to run open source models in their data center or in their private cloud. So cloud's still the inevitable wave, but I see you're going to see this, this new trend yeah. of new stacks of GPUs and supercomputers inside your data centers. Is there, so is there an opportunity for startups to go, go after that, or is that going to be like a Dell or an HPE that does that? What's the opportunity there? I think, you know, I was NVIDIA as a stock we all should have bought for right. John's comment. I think there'll be opportunity for startups, not just to build systems, because systems are hard to make margin, yeah. but software, right? So think about all the software you need to train, fine tune, run the models, and build these applications. How do you replicate the stack that Bedrock has, or Azure has, or Google has, in your VPC, in your data center? So like Llama Index, one of our seed investments, it's all about RAG, retrieval augmented generation. How to build these data pipelines or your enterprise data with these new models inside a public cloud or private cloud. So I think you're going to see new software stacks be created. And, and by the way, congratulations, great investment. Jerry is on, the other Jerry from Llama Index is on theCUBE in our studio with Savannah, uh, uh, and, and team and Howie. So this is again, one of those areas where, is it a white space that's going to get rolled sure. over or is it actually beachhead for an opportunity to get in the game and iterate quickly? And is it, is it an iterate quickly like the web was and yeah. get out front and get fast? Yeah, when you see OpenAI do like LLM or, or RAG out of the box, sure. does that, what does that say? Well, I think it's the right question, Dave. If, is the LLMs, the foundation models, is that a winner take all market or winner take most market? Going back to the question we yeah. had in 2013. 
if it's just one giant model, all OpenAI or all BART or whatever from Google, then the startup ecosystem probably is decimated. But you think there's a long, fat tail of open source models, other foundation models, not just open source, but like, we're investors in flexion, we're investors in adapt, there's anthropic, there's cohere. If there's a, a multiple models out there, then companies like Llama Index have a place to, to exist, right? So again, if it's winner take all, maybe not. If it's winner take some or winner take most, yeah. then there's a vibrant ecosystem for Llama Index. And that's index your bet. Winner that, take, that's winner the best. Takes, yeah. Winner yeah. takes and, and I think, a lot. I think one, two, Selesky proven our model and your thesis around, especially in models, the long tail power yeah. law. Yeah. Two, what Llama Index proves to me as well as from the RAG stuff is that there's a developer e appetite. Yeah. And that keeping that in the local host, which could be on premise yeah. in the data center, maybe the data center is the new local host. I mean, but if you think about the sure. data as the IP, because sure. you're testing. Sure, yeah. And iterating, what's the observability? How do you manage the data? What's the memory recall on the retrieval? I mean, this is new data, net new. It's net new. Net new, so it's not yet been tackled by off the shelf observability. Right, it's, it's net new stacks, it's net new um, how you use data. And so we're, Dave and I were talking about these applications, how you do software development with AI is non-deterministic. You, you get three prompts, or the same prompt to three different models, you get three different answers, right? So all of a sudden, yeah. you know. There's no memory. When we learned to code, it was deterministic. <laughs> the software worked or not. Now with these LLMs, you get the same prompt three models, you're not exactly sure of the response every single time. So software development is going to change. You know, I was talking to some professor at CS at Stanford, and they're like, yeah, intro CS is going to change the next five or 10 years. And so, <laughs> how do you think about building it software? It might not even exist. Yeah, right. <laughs> or yeah, so what, do you call software, what do you call software development? Yeah. So I, I think I'm excited about Lominix, I'm excited yeah. by a bunch of other stuff uh, announced today, from storage to cloud to whatever. But I do think, obviously AI is super exciting. It changes the cloud players, it changes the infrastructure players like database guys or Lama Lama and rack space. It changes the application. So uh, I'm, I'm super bullish about the startup market. In 2013, we talked about we, we asked you, do you think Amazon will go up the stack yeah. and start developing applications? You said, no, their strategy is really going to be to enable developers to build those apps to compete against the likes of Microsoft. So I, we, we were talking the other day, and I think in the coupon, I said, well, is that, was that a failed strategy? And you said, well, is Netflix a failed strategy? Yeah. So that was you know, a good yeah. point. But looking back, I mean, Microsoft is in such a strong position right now. They've yeah. got the full stack from Silicon all they the got way the up apps. to the apps. Right, so how, how do you see Amazon's position now in that context. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, right? I mean, and argue that if you don't have a running game, you need a passing game, to use a sports analogy, right? Yeah, 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 and right. so the extent that Azure's not going to recreate all the basic building blocks horizontally as dominant Amazon, you know, play to your strengths. So if you're Microsoft, you have the full stack from Silicon onto the apps, so why not leverage your apps, right? That totally makes it's sense. It's their only move. It's their only move. You don't have a running game, you need a passing game. Google's doing a version of that, you know, whatever the RPO offense, whatever it is, yeah, right? Yeah. Run pass option. And so, they're not going to recreate the building blocks like Amazon, play to their strengths, and both models will work, right? The, the, the market's big enough where you can have building blocks, building blocks, building blocks, Amazon, and kind of full stack with Azure. Azure's doing very well now because they have the full stack, but they also have a head start on knowing how to build yeah. these applications for working with OpenAI for the past, yeah. you know, and they can, and they can deliver years. value today and get paid for it Correct. again and again. Just like the web was embryonic, Correct. pages load slow. That got faster. So, so the question is, as a startup or a company, get in the game. Yeah. Don't stare at the navel. Don't oh, yeah, rearrange yeah, yeah. the deck chairs. Get but, in the but, game. And the, the other point is, the margin model is superior yeah. with Microsoft. I mean, it, yeah. even Bomber I mean, couldn't kill Microsoft. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 well, to the point I think we're talking about like distribution matters more than technology at the end of the day, right? right? And so, you have the greatest IP, you know, the David versus Goliath, so can you build IP before they build distribution or vice versa? So, they got distribution, all these apps, Marshall shoves AI through the distribution, which other apps. On the flip side, if you're a startup, you might have great technology, you know, can you build distribution to compete? And that's the race, and that's, that's why I have a job. What about the edge action? You were seeing some guys do silicon and develop software yeah. for the edge. You know, it's not, not big numbers yet, but it looks like a giant TAM, I just can't get my hands around it. You know, it depends how you define edge, right? So your phone could be the edge, right? Yeah. So there will be inference of your application, inference of some models at the edge. In your home, in your car, in your pocket, on your face, right? Will there also be inference in like these local pops nearby? Maybe, right? I think Cloudflare announced they're doing some inference or AI inference of edge. I think the stars like fly.io are talking about that. So I think it's reasonable to assume there will be some inference at the edge, 
The question is it pushed all the way to your device or to some like pop at the edge, like a Cloudflare fly or something else, or yeah. just centralized. Are you a fan of the Cloudflare model? I do, especially around security. I, I'm admiring, what Cloudflare's done great is they build out this infrastructure their own pops, and once they have that, they just sell more stuff. Security, R3, you know, their database, their object storage. I'm an investor company called Cato Networks, similar idea, security company, but they build their own pops of network security, and now they sell more and more security services through the same, through the same network of pops, right? Yeah. Again, both companies have the Control kind of- Control the route. Yeah, it's like, don't be dependent upon Amazon, build your own infrastructure. Cato says, hey, we're going to do cloud security, cloud networking on our own infrastructure. Jerry, great to have you on. We've got like 30 seconds left. What are you working on now? Uh, give, us, give the audience a taste of uh, what, what's your thesis now? What are you looking for for companies? What are you investing in? It, it's um, still the same stuff. Seed Series A, super early enterprise software. Um, I would want to be on the right side of history. So there are things like uh, faster data, more data, cheaper storage costs like S3 going down. So when I see trends like that, right? Trends of you know, object storage going down, getting faster, more data in volumes going up, I'm riding those waves. And so early stage founders, data, cloud, and AI, but I'm, I'm Check just Check sizes? Anywhere from a few hundred K to like $10 million. So seed series A, um, but it's really looking for great founders, all things from AI on down. And silicon performance like we've never yeah. seen before. It's, it's yeah. incredible, right? Yeah. We're, we're all going to benefit. Um, so I'm super excited about the 2024. All right, CUBE coverage here in location. We're in the MongoDB Emerald Club. No, Emerald Lounge. Emerald Lounge. <laughs> <laughs> Emerald Club's a car rental thing. <laughs> it's awesome here. Thanks to Mongo for having us here on the set. Stay with theCUBE. We'll be right back after this break.